If you ask someone about the Twin Cities, they'll usually think of one of a few things. Oh, my When we asked some locals, something else came up. So when I think of writers in the Twin Cities, I think of Wanda Gog. Um, she was born in New Ulm, but she spent about five years in the Twin Cities going to school in St. Paul and it, it was what is now MCAT before uh, going off to New York City where she wrote millions of cats and became famous. The character that reminds me the most of the Twin Cities is Charlie Brown. So Charlie Brown is a St. Paul born and bred. Charles Schultz actually graduated from St. Paul Central, which is my alma mater. The author Cheryl Strait in her books Wild and Tiny Beautiful Things because she came to Books and Bars. We had our biggest attendance yet with 200 people and she called me Sweet Pea. Minneapolis is like Mrs. Weasley from Harry Potter. Throughout the series, you're kind of like, she's fine, uh, you don't, maybe don't know her that well. And then in the last book, she hits you with, not my daughter, you bitch. And you realize just how freaking awesome she really is. Sun Young Shin. Um, I was first introduced to her work in college at the University of St. Thomas. She came in and spoke, uh, and we had read her book, Skirt Full of Black. Um, I find that her work is really interesting. I think that, for me, it was um, really important to hear um, an adoptee speaking about adoption in a more critical way than I had ever heard before. So, um, the author that I feel like most typifies uh, our literary scene here in Minnesota is an author that not a lot of people know about, but I think more people should. His name's Paul Bagrukow, and he's actually the reason that I work at Milkweed Editions. I read one of his books in college and decided that this is what I wanted to do with my life. All of the characters from the Rocky and Bullwinkle universe, uh, Jay Ward production, I think General Mills sponsored, and part of the reason why I love Rocky and Bullwinkle is as a kid it was the first time uh, noticing a character or a world set in Minnesota, in this case Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, and I also just love the puns uh, involved, which is pretty Minnesotan in terms of humor. So the book that most reminds me of the Twin Cities is the translation of Dr. Apelli's and that is because there's a library in it um, that in fact in the text looks nothing at all like uh, Central Library in downtown Minneapolis but in my imagination resembles it entirely. My name is Sherry Quamley, she's the author of Love and Magic, a memoir, a mixed race memoir and as a result of writing her story she is now a finalist for the Minnesota Book Awards. The book that reminds me of being in the Twin Cities is World. It's a book of poetry by Ed Bach Lee, and he's been very influential uh, in my life as a poet, as a mentor, just an inspiration. Uh, when I think about a uh, literary figure that epitomizes the Twin Cities, uh, I think about a guy named Jeff Schatz, who is an editor over at Grey Wolf. Uh, Jeff remains incredibly humble and gracious and down to earth um, and excited about, uh, you know, the smallest projects that are happening here in the Twin Cities. Potluck Supper with Meeting to Follow because Andy Sturdivant writes about the sights and streets of my childhood with the accuracy of a native but the imagination of a transplant. I'd say if the struggle was a dam filled with wicked white water, then Tien Ba Fee, he's at the bottom of the dam. With a chisel and a hammer, he made himself slowly cracking at it. Cracking at it. For all of us. Dykes to watch out for. The comic series by Alison Bechdel most reminds me of the Twin Cities. Alison started writing it when she was living in St. Paul, even though many people think that it's referring to Portland, Oregon, it's in fact referring to the Twin Cities. And the bookstore in Dykes to watch out for, called Mad Women Books, is based off of Amazon, which was the first lesbian feminist bookstore in the United States, and it was located in Minneapolis. A book by Wanda Michaud, who's the great niece of Louis Michaud, and the book is called No Crystal Stare. 
This book was an inspiring and is an inspiring book to me because it documents the life and work of Louis Michaud, who was a Harlem bookseller and started the National African Memorial Bookstore in Harlem in 1931. It was a meeting place and more than a commercial space. And so um, that was an inspiration for why I think spaces like Ancestry Books here exist. Jim Moore, because he once told me that as hard as I try, I can never actually leave St. Paul. So writers, whether this is your first time here or the place you call home, we can't wait to see you at AWP in the Twin Cities. Welcome. We're glad you're here.